Very good evening once again from uh, the sports desk. Uh, let's start here. Seven times Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton is set to make a shock switch from Mercedes to Ferrari in 2025 as a replacement for Spanish driver Carlos Sainz. Now, according to multimedia reports, uh, it means uh, Hamilton would team up with uh, Charles Leclerc with the Italian team announcing a week ago that uh, Leclerc had signed uh, on for more seasons. The move would be Ferrari's latest attempt to reignite their Formula One world championship ambitions. They've not had a world champion since Kimi Raikkonen in 2007 and their last uh, Constructors Championship was uh, claimed in 2008. Hamilton has been with Mercedes since 2013 and won uh, his first title with McLaren in 2008. His current contract is due to expire at the end of next year and a move to Ferrari would surely extend that into the sport's new engine era in 2026. Now, the possibility of a record eight title, if not with Mercedes this season, with the third team would be a sensational step for the great. Let's uh, uh, speak about this with uh, Motoza TV F1 blogger Lufefe Maiki. So, Lufefe, very good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening and thank you for having me. I mean, th this is something that is not necessarily new. <laughs> this, this is a rumor that normally would creep up around this time. What makes it a little bit more credible this time? Uh, you know, because it seems like pundits are saying it looks like this time it's happening. Well, the story broke out um, through Sky Sports, which is yeah. a, a very credible broadcaster, as you know. I mean, they are the official broadcaster of Formula One. So you can trust the story. And also there were visuals of Rachel Brooks, one of the journalists from Sky Sports, who was reporting from Brackley where the Mercedes factory is and she was standing outside there and her reports were saying that there was a meeting amongst all the staff. They were only briefed today about this move of Lewis Hamilton, which to me makes me feel like this story, even the way it came out, maybe somebody leaked it because even Formula One haven't confirmed it, Mercedes haven't confirmed it and Lewis hasn't confirmed it, but Sky Sports are adamant that this is definitely Ago. Yeah, and, and I mean, again, as we say, these whispers have been uh, there a, a few times of Hamilton joining the Scuderia, uh, but this time, as you said, it looks a little bit more credible. Mm -hmm. In the bigger scheme of things, what does this mean? Uh, um, with Hamilton chasing his eighth title, uh, and, and we know that he's not necessarily been happy lately uh, with his team and the performance. So could this be the ideal time for him to try something new, as it were? Well, it's been reported even previously that Lewis has always had ambitions to drive mm. for Ferrari. So this is nothing new. And around this time last year, John Alken, the CEO of the Exco Group, which are the parent company that own Ferrari, was reported to have called him personally to say that he would like them to drive for them as soon as this year. This was before Lewis signed the contract extension last year. So his contract was due to expire at the end of last season, and then they wanted him to join this season. But he then said to them, no, not yet. He wanted to see how the season would turn out last season. And if you look at the signs, like uh, there was the race where he won, I mean, sorry, where he was on the podium, mm. and only team principal Toto Wolff came to the podium celebrations to celebrate with him, <laughs> and the rest of the team were not there. And this mm. was just before mm. he signed his contract. So those were already signs telling that that's not necessarily a happy camp. Uh, how important then for the Scuderia would this Hamilton move be? As, uh, as I was saying in the introduction, they have not won a championship, uh, Constructors' Championship since 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not had a champion since Kimi in 2007. Mm -hmm. So they also need somebody who can bring back the glory days, as it were. Is Hamilton, could he be the right guy to bring those, back those glory days? You know what I've always said, Ferrari, they don't need much to start winning again. Mm. And two seasons ago, they had a car that was almost on par with current champions mm. Red Bull, but they were let down by their strategy calls. They were making so many unforced errors, long pit stops and wrong strategy calls, basically. So I think that they don't need much in order to start winning again. Their package, I would say, last season was the best of the rest after Red Bull. So having a driver of Hamilton's experience and pedigree, uh, he will bring that winning mentality from Mercedes who won eight Constructors' Championships until 2021 from 2014. 
So that kind of experience, because it almost feels like Ferrari have forgotten how to win. Mm. So mm. I think Hamilton, he will come and bring that, cu that winning culture with him. And reports are that his race engineer, Peter Bonington, might be got coming across mm. with him. And probably he won't be the only one. And, and for me, that was the next point, that their technical department is quite depleted. And, and, and we've seen that uh, uh, Elkan has been talking about just bolstering that technical department. Would it be that important also to say, yes, we can bring a, a driver that is capable of winning a championship. But as you say, the small mistakes were what has been costing, uh, uh, you know, Ferrari championships, costing them titles and podiums. Yes, because uh, Ferrari last year, they changed uh, team principles from Mattia Binotto to Frederic Fassier. Now, Mattia Binotto is uh, an engineer, but Fassier is more an administrator. So by making that change right at the top, there's an element of engineering that they lost in losing Binotto. But uh, I think uh, Fassier has shown that he is probably more suited for that role as the administrator with experience with Sauber, et cetera, and other junior formulas as well. So definitely they do need someone who is technical to come in and fill in that, I will call it the Bonotto role. Mm. But what would effectively be the lure for Hamilton here? Would it be about winning that eighth title? Or as he has always said, he's always been a, a fan of the prancing horse. Uh, and, and they've also been a fan of his. But what would be key for him making this move? It's about getting that eighth title or just moving away from a team that uh, looks like things are a little bit toxic between him and the team at the moment. I think it's probably a combination of both. Mm. Uh, maybe in the back of his mind, he always had that thing that maybe I would love to go to Ferrari, but with the success that he was enjoying at um, Mercedes mm. between 2014 and 2021, it was hard to imagine him driving for anybody else. And probably for himself, too, he probably thought, you know, I'll make myself basically the Michael Schumacher of brand Mercedes. Because mm. Michael Schumacher, you know, won uh, five championships with Ferrari, which makes him the most successful Ferrari driver. And Lewis is obviously the most successful Mercedes, Mercedes driver. driver yeah. So I think that he probably thought it's not going to happen low-key. But after the last two seasons, the nature of the relationship, I mean you can see that the team are not necessarily listening to all the advice that he is bringing because Mercedes, they, don't, they have got this no pods philosophy, which means their cars have no mm. side pods. And they implemented that from 2022 season, which is when they started struggling. Mm. Then apparently Lewis was against it from the get-go. And then at the end of the 22 season, he said again, guys, let's go back to having side pods. But the engineers are convinced that this is the future of Mercedes where they'll get a big advantage once they get it right. But until then, obviously, these poor results must be frustrating for both drivers, not just Lewis. So, so w w with, with that said, then, I mean, you look at uh, uh, how he has been performing and, and, and possibility of joining uh, Ferrari. What does this mean to the rest of the contenders? Should they be worried about this combination? Uh, or should Red Bull just be thinking, let them come? <laughs> well, you know what? Um, Lewis in the Ferrari, mm. I think he's scoring more points than Leclerc did last season and Carlos Sainz. In fact, Lewis in the Mercedes scored more points than any other driver outside of the Red Bull drivers. Mm. So that on its own says that uh, he's really still performing at his peak because I think Mercedes, they were never higher than third in terms of the pecking order of the grid last season. They were either third, fourth, or fifth at any point during the season. I think there was one or two races mm. where you felt like they were second. But he managed to beat all the other drivers in much more superior cars in terms of a points tally, which then means if he has a stronger a car, car, then he should be closer to the Red Bull. Let, let, let's end then with the issue of age, maybe. He, he, he turned 39 not so long ago. Mm -hmm. Does that matter in, in racing, the, the, the age factor? I've heard a lot of people raising this thing about age. Yeah. So, in 1992, the world champion Nigel Mansell, yeah. he was 39. The following year, Alain Prost, he was 38. Okay. Juan Manuel Fangio, 
he won five world championships in the 1950s, and all of them, he was over the age of 40. Now let's come to Lewis. Lewis doesn't drink, doesn't eat meat, he's vegan, he doesn't have children, he's not married, he basically has nothing to lose. <laughs> so, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but also black don't crack. Okay. <laughs> um, so Lewis could be 39, but I think he has a 26-year-old body. Got you. And in terms of talent, I think he's just that 3 to 5% above any other driver. We're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much uh, for coming through. You're right. Black don't crack. <laughs>